Hey everyone, Hades here. Alright, at first glance, this is just a Samsung flash drive. It's a damn nice flash drive. I mean, it's, you know, it's all metal, 128 gigs of storage, and really fast speeds. But it also has the ability to turn any Windows machine into an emulation station machine through a Linux operating system known as Bartosera. Today, I'll show you how to flash Bartosera, transfer your ROMs, install non-emulated programs like Firefox and Steam, and get the best performance from NVIDIA GPUs. Let's get started. First, let's flash Bartosera onto our flash drive. You'll need a program called Belena Etcher. Go ahead and download that if you don't have it. Then, head to the Bartosera website and download the latest version of Bartosera. If you're on a regular PC, download the standard desktop slash laptop file. If you're on an Intel Mac, download the Intel-based Apple Computers version. Bartosera is also available for retro handholds like the RG351P, but I would personally suggest ArcOS or 351 Elect for those devices. Apple Silicon Macs don't have any support, but you can still use something like OpenMU. Once you've got both of those downloaded, plug in the flash drive you want to install Bartosera on. This could also be an external hard drive or a microSD card. Before we do anything else, please make sure that everything is backed up from the drive, as this process will completely erase the drive. Once everything's backed up, open Berlina Etcher and select the Bartosera image. It usually doesn't need to be extracted, but if the flash fails, extract the file. Make sure that the correct flash drive is selected and hit the flash button. I would suggest unplugging all other external drives from your system to make sure you don't select the wrong one and accidentally erase important data. Once Bartosera is flashed, Belena Etcher will eject the drive. If you're on a Radeon graphics card and don't plan to use Bartosera on an NVIDIA machine, then you can either skip to the time on the screen, or use this time to laugh at NVIDIA users for having to change an extra setting. NVIDIA users, unplug the USB drive and plug it back in. Open the drive and open the Bartosera configuration file. Find the line that says hashtag NVIDIA driver equals true and remove the hash. This enables NVIDIA drivers, and it is absolutely vital that you do this. If you don't, you'll have unplayable performance on systems your PC would normally be able to run, and even systems like NES will have screen tearing. Once that's done, turn off your PC. You might want to load this video on your phone from this point. Turn your PC back on, and mash the boot menu key on your keyboard. This is different for each device, but typically your post screen will have this key listed. If it doesn't, just Google your motherboard model or device model on pre-built and laptops, along with boot menu key. Once you're in the boot menu, select your USB drive, and you should hopefully be booting into Bartosera Linux. If you see the emulation station menu, congrats! You've successfully installed Bartosera onto a USB drive. And by the way, Bartosera has no impact on your PC's internal storage. Everything is sandboxed and stored in the flash drive. The next step is to load up our BIOS and game files. Because these are copyrighted, I can't tell you where to get these, but, you know, Google is your friend. I'm not going to go on about owning games you download because you're causing no market harm by downloading games that aren't officially on sale anymore, and yeah, I will be dying on this hill. Uh, I swear to god I could rant all day about downloading ROMs. Yeah, and anyway. Make sure you have a ROM collection on an external hard drive or another flash drive, and plug that into your machine. Press the F1 key to bring up the file explorer. In the sidebar, you'll see shortcuts to your ROMs and BIOS folders, along with any connected hard drives. Click on your game drive, and copy your BIOS folder into the BIOS folder in the sidebar. Then, copy your ROMs into the folders. Most systems won't actually need BIOS files, but sometimes they can improve performance or add things like boot screens, and some systems do need them. Once you've copied your ROMs and BIOS files over, press Ctrl Q to exit the file explorer. Open the Emulation Station menu with Start on your controller or Space on your keyboard, and go to Game Settings. Then, press Update Games Lists. Once that finishes, you'll see all of the systems you've added. Now, let's connect to the internet. If an Ethernet cable is plugged into your PC, you'll already be online. If you need to connect to Wi-Fi, open the Emulation Station menu, go to Network Settings, turn on Wi-Fi, and type in your connection info. Once you're online, we can do even more cool things. Let's start by downloading some themes. In the Emulation Station menu, go to the Updates and Downloads section, then select Themes. My personal favourite is Elect for Linux but I suggest, you know, trying a bunch out and seeing what you like the best. You can also scrape information about your games, like box art, descriptions, and video previews. Head to the Emulation Station menu, then select Scraper. You will need a Screen Scraper account from ScreenScraper.fr, but it's free to sign up. Now, I don't have an account, and I don't feel like rebooting my system to create one, and I can't be bothered to pull out my phone. So let's install some non-emulator apps. Exit out of the menu, and press F1 to go to the files. 
Select Applications and click Flatpak-Config. Search for your app, in this case Firefox, and select Install. This is also how you install things like Steam. Once it finishes, go back to the Emulation Station menu and update the games list. All programs you install will appear in the Ports section in Emulation Station. Now, we can open up Firefox and create a Screen Scraper account. Back to Scraping. Open the Scraper menu again and open the Scraper settings. Change your settings. I personally use Box2D for box art and enable the scraping of videos and a few other things. Enter your Screen Scraper login and press Start. Do note, this will take a while, but it will run in the background while you're playing games. I'm not going to really talk about performance here, as it depends on your system. Obviously, you know, you won't be able to play Wii U or PS3 if you're on a Celeron just because you're using Bardacera. Basically, anything you can run on your system in Windows will probably run on Bardacera. Now, let's have a look at my favourite feature of Bardacera, changing between systems. I'm going to go ahead and power off my system here, and we'll switch over to my laptop. On my laptop, the boot menu key is Escape, so I'll mask that here. And there we go. I booted into Bardacera, and now I'm playing F-Zero X. All of your settings, box arts, and everything else will carry over, because nothing is stored off the flash drive. And, Bardacera will give you the maximum performance you can get on a laptop, even if you aren't connected to a power outlet. I'll let you decide whether this is good or bad, because, you know, battery life, but I personally like it. I will say that if you don't need to move between PCs, and you like the Emulation Station interface but don't want to reboot every time you want to play retro games, you can download Emulation Station as a standalone program for Windows and Linux. Anyway, that's Bardacera. If you have any issues, leave a comment. I read all of them. It's really easy when you have an average of two comments. I am barely scratching the surface of what you can do with this, so, you know, have a play around with it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.